I'm Julie Robbins, CEO of Earthquaker Devices. I'm Jamie Stillman. I'm the founder product designer of Earthquaker Devices, and I'm in my basement office. Wanted to share some insights and thoughts on how Earthquaker has responded to the pandemic and how I've worked alongside my team to keep everyone safe and get through this crazy time. So I've been working down here in my basement since, I want to say March 17th. I think that's, that's how long I've been down here in this cave. Um, Julie and I were actually in Europe up till March 12th. But around January, February, when I'm seeing the news reports about it, um, I start thinking, wow, if we need to close, how will this go? <laughs> and sort of starting to think about what that might look like. And my, I didn't have all the details worked out, but I knew we could do it. And I knew that because we're so nimble that we would find a way to persevere and um, that my focus would be really on keeping everyone safe and getting through this um, temporary but bizarre situation. And my gut instinct, my inclination was not to have any sort of knee jerk reaction and to really do everything in my power to keep everyone employed on their health insurance stable in this incredibly unstable time. Luckily, a lot of people at the shop had been thinking about this before. And, you know, Julie had been thinking about it. And uh, it, it took about, a week or two and everybody like collectively had a lot of great ideas like on you know how to handle this for Earthquaker. We didn't ship any pedals I think for about six weeks and uh, you know while we were just learning how to navigate everything and you know I think everybody who had a hand in figuring out how to operate from home at the level you know at the production level that we're at did an amazing job coming up with a like a cohesive type plan but you know like julie mike tolan josh collins like all, everybody like really kind of had their head on their shoulders and were like okay i think we can do this and i think this is how we can we can do it and like really kind of fine-tuned it as it went along and the objective was for people that were returning to the shop to come back with a level of um confidence that all possible precautions were being met. Um, for me, if I had been approaching that as, hey, we just need to you know, make sure our chairs are six feet apart and um, that we wash our hands, that that wasn't adequate for the circumstances that I really wanted to go above and beyond to just take every possible precaution. So, really coordinated approach to who we were bringing back, when we would bring them back, how we would bring them back. We have equipment that just can't be used at home. We have a solder bath. We have a giant CNC machine. We have printers. Of course, shipping and centralized inventory, it's very difficult to take any of that home. So was trying to figure out how can we spread people out properly, Beyond hand washing and masks, what else can I do to help prevent potential spread in my factory? Hi, I'm Mike. I'm one of the production managers here, and this is my desk. Um, this was always my desk, but it's a little different now that we are in this COVID environment. Right now, I just have basically our skeleton crew is in the shop with me. We have five people populating, and then just our skeleton shipping crew, inventory crew, and some people in the machine shop. So everybody else is at home, the whole office crew, and everybody that doesn't have to be here is working from home. One of the big things with bringing anybody into the shop was this idea of, you know, doing whatever we can to have the best safety setup possible. We got these really cool personal air purifiers for all the desks. We also got some larger floor units for the shop and a additional system installed in the central HVAC. So we have a few layers of protection there. 
But our workflow has changed a lot in that now we're trying to stay in our areas as much as possible so that we're not in the same spaces as anybody else. We've tried to set up all of our workspaces, you know, with adequate room between them, making sure that nobody's facing one another. Um, you know, we're all constantly washing our hands, sanitizing, wearing gloves, spraying all of our work with isopropyl. So basically anything we can do to layer up our protection, you know, as we understand our best methods for, you know, preventing spread. So this is our normal workstation set up right now. We used to have a row of desks side by side the whole way down this aisle, but now we have everything kind of compartmentalized. So normally Josh Novak would be working here. He's got his air purifier, sanitizer, rubbing alcohol, ammonia-based cleaner for cleaning also. But he has everything he needs here to do his build for the day. So he doesn't have to get up to his, out of his desk, refill his bins, other places, stuff like that. So what used to have like five desks on each side, so we had room for 15 builders in here. Now we just have room for five. We used to have our assemblers over here, but this is just our shipping area now. We're still doing all of our daily shipping. Um, and then this is also where we prep work to send home to the home boxers. You know, a lot of our parts are generally the same. We're just working in much larger batches now so that we don't have to replenish things as often. Back here, the machine shop. So we actually moved a whole drill press set up to Josh Lascanis' garage. So every day he's drilling like hundreds of enclosures at home. The rest of the crew has to work here to be able to use the printers and the drill press and stuff. My name's Josh Lascanic. I work in the machine shop as well as a uh, events coordinator. A typical day for me is by eight o'clock I come out and uh, lately I've been turning the heater on and having my cup of coffee and starting to drill holes. And that's pretty much what I do all day long. When I was in the shop, my day was broke up with some other tasks here and there. But, you know, this is what I can do from here to keep the team moving. So that's cool. You know, I'm just glad to be part of things. I knew it, it would be bumpy at first, like any giant transition like that might be. But I also knew that, you know, this crew would figure a way to do it. It might be a little slower. It might not be exactly the same but I knew that we would find a way to make things happen. My wife's working from home. My daughter was in daycare pre-COVID. You know, uh, setting things up the way they're set up enabled us to keep her out of daycare. It enabled us to be here, know we can be safe, still be productive. I got to see things, you know, hang out with my daughter more times and see things that I probably would have missed here or there. I love her, my best buddy. It's great. Back in this area, we've built our whole, this is basically where we prepare work to send home to builders. So we run our boards through the solder dipper and then we add all the parts that the quality control team needs. And then these get sent out to people's houses. But if you look over there, you can see how much we're spread out. We've even got Ian working over there on the other side of the forklift. He's doing assembly. It helps get our immediate work out of the way. The whole idea of the shutdown happened very quickly. You know, there was one day that Josh Collins, who does our, a lot of our system stuff and is also just kind of the office genius, he talked to me and he said, you know, maybe we should make a plan for a potential shutdown. So I wrote something up and the next day they closed the schools here and basically that weekend we sent the majority of our staff home. So we had to do a lot of pivoting. I mean, at first we were all building at home, so we were hand populating again, hand soldering everything. And then we moved to our current system where you know we're kind of splitting the work. So while it is like crazy, I mean, everything is so different than it was eight months ago. It's just like, it feels good to be able to keep things moving. You know, I can't imagine us being able to shift around like this if we didn't have the group of people working here that we do. You know, like the whole team has been so flexible and thoughtful and forgiving whenever we make mistakes. And, you know, obviously Jamie and Julie have been so accommodating to make us, you know, be able to do our work so it's been a challenge but you know we're getting through it <laughs> we also you know released a pedal um in the middle of all this and 
even under normal circumstances, it's always challenging to line everything up correctly and um, get all everything that we need out the door and in the best, most efficient way. And um, everyone really came together and did such a great job. I feel lucky to to have all these people who like really put a lot of time and effort into, you know, getting stuff done. We used to be able to do things here where we could literally like hand off the work to the person next to us and we could push a product through in just a matter of a day or two if we needed to. And now that everyone's working remotely, it's much more complicated because, you know, we do all of our population here because we can do it the best quality and the most efficiently. But then it'll go out to Corey Heron's house for QC, come back to the shop, go out to Bryce for assembly, come back to the shop, go out to Fedra Morgan for wiring, come back to the shop again, then go out to Sam or Joe for boxing. So something may start here, but it may go to like three or four people's houses before it even makes it to the shelf. So the system is way more complicated as far as like getting things from point A to point B. Um, but that's the thing we try to figure out every day. It's, it's an interesting puzzle. <laughs> While we're making all our orders, I think that we're one of the few companies that is making uh, like orders on a regular basis. Hi, my name is Jeff France. I'm the production manager, Earthquaker Devices, with Mike Tolan and Mike Stangelo. Here's uh, where I do all the wiring and stuff. Pedals come in, they come in these boxes, and I break them off onto here, wire them, and I test them. Here's some coffee, obviously. After they get tested, they sit there and I log the lot numbers and then they get put back in a box right here to go. And here's the most important thing of all, Connie. You know, I think a lot of people were really hindered by closures and supply chains coming from China. And, you know, a lot of people had their stuff manufactured elsewhere. And, you know, if you're part of like seven or eight companies products that are made in one place you know you get put on pause because you know everybody was put on pause and some people are first dibs and we're mostly entirely under our own roof so that was like a huge benefit for the company what we have seen is an incredible continued strong demand for our products and that is just so affirming for me to know um, because then it means that I can keep all these people safely employed. Um, but it also means, you know, we're somehow providing maybe some inspiration or some needed recreation or therapy because let's face it, in the pandemic, there's nothing safer than playing guitar pedals by yourself in your basement. It's the safest thing you could be doing. You know? Yeah, we did have this discussion at the beginning. It kept coming up that there's two industries that do well through depression and recessions, and that's alcohol and musical instruments. Uh, so that has one thing to do with it, is that we're one of the companies that actually kind of thrives on it because people have the spare time. And if you're gonna invest money into something a lot of times people are more willing to invest money into something that they can use to kill their time when they have a lot of spare time. So I think a lot of people are viewing pedals specifically as a less irresponsible music purchase because what you buy isn't that expensive. It doesn't take a lot of space. Uh, so it's uh, easy to justify a pedal purchase. Our staff is amazing, and I mean, I mean, I miss seeing them all, but they're all still getting stuff done. I, you know, I think we all still have good relationships, even though that we're not together. Hi, I'm Ali Emerald from Earthquaker Devices, and this is how I work from home. Uh, I'm just in my living room right now, but I've converted some of it to a pedal building station. And so here is my QC station. I have a rubber mat. Don't damage the table. I have my solder, my soldering iron, scraper. Um, try and keep organized. I like to keep all my tools, top right corner. Um, my little QC trash bin for the rails and the tape. Um, I also like to keep like the three main uh, things that we use for QCing on the table. So here we have LEDs, 
uh, ground pins and power jacks, pretty much the three things that almost every pedal that I QC needs, as well as sticky pads for some pots. Usually I'll put my pots right here so I have everything on the living room table. Um, but as well as uh, QCing, I also do some icing. Uh, so I just convert over here to my IC station. So here I have a smaller table so I can be a bit more comfortable sitting on the couch. Um, I have the ICs, I have the boards over here, and then I just kind of switch everything over here. And I have a slightly smaller workstation. That's how I work from home, uh, here in my living room and build pedals. Thanks. My name is Summer Stetzik, and I am the bookkeeper at Earthquaker Devices. And uh, right now I'm working from home. You know, with our industry specifically, you know, we were afraid that, you know, what's going to happen with the economy? Are we going to be busy? But people must be buying pedals to play music at home because we have been busier than ever. And with Earthquaker, there's a lot of trust in the employees to get the job done so that we can all stay home and stay safe and stay in business. Because if we're not making pedals, then we can't pay anyone's salary or their benefits or any of the other expenses that still exist, even though we're not all there. I haven't heard of anyone else's employer going above and beyond like this. So I feel very lucky. I am Jason Ben and I do quality control QC for Earthquaker. So right now I am trimming all these leads that kind of pop up from the dipper. This is an old like laptop stand thingy that I had that I wasn't using for anything. So now it's like I can put that up if I want to like, you know, give my arm a break. And then these little grooves catch all the metal and it's kind of weird but it works and i've got all my different trimmers like i have this one that i just put some padding on for a little bit better like grip my daughter drew that on there put power jacks on there um, ground pin everything gets soldered all the pots and parts over here so when i do all that first soldering i bring these over here and then i line my pots all up and i do the sticky tape right here so i can just put them on the back bend them bam 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 and then they go to my dining table where they get ready to be boxed and sent back to the shop i just got this set up for messing around with stuff eventually my name is Ben Vaughn. I've been at Earthquaker for just over five years now. I've moved to QC as my primary job. I usually get a week to two weeks worth of work and I do a drop off whenever I'm finished with that and Mike meets me at the uh, drop off door and gives me my supplies for the week. So everything's been really smooth as far as that goes. I honestly felt pretty confident in things going along as they are until everything goes back to pre-pandemic lifestyle. You know, business has been doing very well. So uh, very, very fortunate to be in the position that I'm in actually. My name is Sam Wonke. I am the box witch over at Earthquaker. I also do shipping, but currently I'm just working from home, so I just do the boxing. Still doodling a bit. I haven't doodled as much since the whole thing, but I still draw cats sometimes just to, you know, get some cats in the boxes. I knew that Julie and Jamie always have us, so I wasn't that worried. You know, we're all staying real safe and we're all like making it the best and really supportive of each other. I mean, our production is still you know, as good as quality and pretty much the same output as what it used to be now. This one's a bad one. Gotta take that out. We don't let things like that slide. I definitely just miss the regular, you know, camaraderie between the shop, you know. You just miss the people, you know, the most. But even if you don't see somebody, you can still think about them and send them good energy. So that's the best thing for, you know, that I can do. 
I am so proud of my team for always bringing their A game, always um, trying their very best under just like the most bizarre circumstances. Everyone really took all the safety precautions to heart, took all of the practical suggestions to heart, and have really been great supports to each other and really gave me the confidence that we're going to get through this um, just fine. Then on the other side, um, Jamie's been working from the basement. He's got this like crazy um, development lab set up down there and has really been very productive with designing new pedals and getting creative in that way. And that's really exciting to me. The design process after, after the shutdown kind of went back to how Earthquaker started. I started just sitting in my basement tinkering on stuff all day and all night whenever I felt like it. I have had an extremely productive time. I've finished about eight pedal designs that I think are totally ready to be products. I do feel like having all this time on my hands to, to design stuff freely, like whenever uh, I feel like doing it, I think I've just been able to explore more like what, what really interests me about guitar and just electronics in general, but also I've kind of been entertaining a lot of my hobbies in guitar a lot more. So I've been building a lot of guitars, been learning how to wind pickups. I think maybe just more familiar with, you know, the instrument I've been designing for than I think that I ever really have. So if history has shown anything, any of my hobbies can turn into a product, <laughs> I think, at any point. So who knows? Who knows what, what we'll be doing or like what new product types might actually come out of it. <laughs>